What's going on guys, I'm Tomas. This video is about a user created Apple Fusion Drive and its performance. It's an overview video, so with that in mind, there are some abrupt cuts throughout the video. That's because I had over 40 minutes of video to work with and I wanted to cut that down and communicate some important aspects of a user created Apple Fusion Drive in the shortest amount of time possible. That being said, I am going to max out the SSD portion of the Fusion Drive to see what happens and how OS 10 handles that. This came from Mike over at uh, Insanely Great Mac. He gave me this idea and a big thanks to him. As you probably have seen, the Fusion Drive is indeed connected to a magnetic drive that is 5400 RPMs and negotiated at 1.5 gigabits per second. By using the IO stat counter, we can see IO activity on each of the drives. Disk zero is the SSD. Disk one is my Thunderbolt drive that is connected. I did this on purpose so we could have distinct differentiation between the two drives. And disk two is the magnetic Toshiba drive. To max out the drive, I'm going to use disk utility and create a new disk image. I wanted complete spillover, so I'm going to create a 300 gigabyte disk image, as the SSD is only 256 gigabytes big. And by spillover, I mean that I wanted a fair amount of data to be pushed onto the magnetic drive. Okay, so now the SSD is about to be filled. We are going to be watching the transition from the SSD to the magnetic drive. You can see here that there is a very steep drop off in write speeds. With these horrendous write speeds, I thought to myself, so what if I wanted to use my system right now? What if I decided to open up an application or whatever? What if I wanted to create something? In addition, what if I was going to read and write from my Fusion Drive? I wanted to test this, so with that in mind, I used Blackmagic Disk Speed Test while the disk image was still being created. As you've seen, the read and write speeds weren't impressive at all. It was regular 5400 RPM magnetic hard drive speeds. And now that the disk image is completed, as you can see, both drives are actively writing um, one from the other or whatnot. I don't really know how to tell, but you can see that there's a, a lot of activity between the two drives. I wanted to see what was going to happen if I threw a wrench into the whole thing while this process was completing. And by that, I just ran another Blackmagic disk speed test. You can see severe degradation of the read and write speeds as time moves forward. As you can see, there is a spike in the read and write speeds, but then it, it evens out at a very slow speed. 35 to 40 megabytes per second. Read and write, well, um, I can only leave this up to you to judge. Okay, so let's let the drives finish what they're doing and let both of them go into an almost inactive state. Let's increase the size of this disk speed test to five gigabytes to go with what Mike said from Insanely Great Mac that he thinks that there is four gigabytes of space left in the SSD caching part of the Fusion Drive. Now, I don't know if it's because this is a user-created Fusion Drive, but almost as soon as I click start on the disk speed test, you can see activity on the magnetic drive. That being said, said this almost proves Mike's theory of four gigabytes of space being left for caching purposes. Okay, so let's test this in a different way. I'm going to create a two gigabyte empty disk image using disk utility and let's watch and see what happens. Almost as soon as I click create on the new disk image, OS 10 recognizes that it needs to move some more data to the magnetic drive, thus almost sabotaging itself. I know, sabotage seems quite the choice of words, but in this next test, I just want to reiterate what I think OS X is doing, which is basically sabotaging itself in speed and performance, as it tries to maintain that four gigabytes of SSD caching. Now, here's my challenge to you as a viewer, uh, as this Apple Fusion Drive isn't my daily driver, I would like for you to set up and create your own Fusion Drive, and then run on it for a while, try to fill up the SSD, and then see what happens over a longer period of time. I don't know if OS X manages it better that way where it moves more off of the SSD onto the magnetic drive over a longer period of time, but that has yet to have been tested or proven. I would be highly interested in your video response regarding this issue. All right, so that concludes my overview video. Now a little bit of disclaimer time. I discovered this today and it concerned me quite a bit. If you do your own Apple Fusion Drive, if you create your own Apple Fusion Drive, you will lose your recovery partition. Therefore, it is highly recommended, I mean highly recommended, that you get a copy if you don't already have the DMG from the Mac App Store of OS X Mountain Lion before you begin this process. And to do that, check out the video in the description where I link you to 
Jonathan of TLD today where he shows you how to get a copy of your OS before you begin this process. Thank you and have a great day. I appreciate you taking the time to view my video.